Outstanding, the ultimate accolade for teachers. We challenge primary teacher Annie Ashraf to go from good to outstanding. A top inspector will observe one lesson. Two experts will fine tune her practice and beef up her presentation. She then gets two weeks to take on the advice before the inspector comes back for the final verdict. I went out with my friends and they were like saying, just do your worst. <laughs> you can only get better after that. And I just thought, oh, OK then, <laughs> but maybe not. Down Primary is a popular school in Muswell Hill, North London. Annie Ashraf is teaching a Year 5 class. I've been teaching for 13 years and I still don't feel like I know everything. I still feel like I still need to learn more ways in which I can help my children. Head teacher Evelyn Pittman recognises Annie's strengths. She's very strong, very experienced, very committed and very keen to develop herself. My class, they're very lively, mainly boys. I've had to be a lot more practical, a lot more hands-on, so I can grab their attention. She's a very good teacher, actually. She's quite, she, yeah, she's a very good teacher. So annoying. They're really bright, uh, really bright. It's kind of about how we affect pollution and stuff like that. I enjoy some of her lessons. Some of them are just like too easy. Annie's literacy and numeracy teaching is highly regarded. For this challenge she's chosen to focus on her geography teaching where she feels less secure. I think I do know the basics but I don't feel like I'm a real expert. Um, yeah, I enjoy geography sometimes, but sometimes it gets a bit complicated and I don't really understand it. In reality, you cannot be a subject specialist across the board, and this is part of what Annie's tussling with at the moment. When it comes to literacy and numeracy, it tends to be just one or two objectives that we need to cover within that lesson, whereas geography tends to have three or four. What I get confused about is which one should I be focusing on? These photographs I took when we went to Walton on the Nays earlier on this week, and I want to use them in my first lesson uh, where we're looking at Muswell Hill and photographs of Muswell Hill and comparing them to photographs of Walton on the Nays. It's the morning of her observation. I am feeling really nervous. You see the classroom one way and somebody else is going to come in and see it in another way. I just want this all over and done with by now. With hundreds of inspections under her belt, school inspector Claire Gillies certainly knows an outstanding lesson when she sees one. I've come to Tetherdown Primary School in North London to watch Annie Ashraf teaching her year five class geography. Annie has 60 minutes to impress our inspector with the first lesson in a new unit on Walton on the Nays. Right, I'm going to be giving you a map. What's this map of? Um, Orlando. England. Of England, yeah. you're quite right. And on the map, I'd like you to put down Walton on the Nays in London and then possibly one other place. I feel like this. It's, like, it's somewhere. Yeah. London definitely isn't right Because I mean, London's it's nowhere near. Really we know from research that pupils are very clear in their minds what makes an outstanding lesson. They talk about the teacher being kind, a teacher who can explain clearly and say, what can I do to help you learn better? Today, I just want to talk to you about the fact that geography is made up of three different things. Something called human geography. What do you think human geography could mean? Like where humans live. Where humans live, good, definitely, it does mean that. Robert, 
um, how humans affect the environment. Lovely. It does mean about how humans affect the environment. Physical geography. Anybody got an idea what that could mean? Um, Daphne? Well, it could be about, like, you know, some people try to um, cycle around the world. Oh, okay. And then, like, that type of stuff. That kind of thing. Robert? Isn't it about, like, um, different heights in the land or different... Um, sort of habitats. Yeah, stuff. Robert's actually got the idea. Physical geography actually means actually what the land really is like. Matthew. By ocean plates. Ocean like plates, that. good. Yeah, so ocean plates could be physical geography, you're quite right. So that's physical. The next really hard question what do you think environmental geography is? Milo. It's sort of like living things and like the ozone layer and stuff. It's living things and the ozone layer. I enjoyed the lesson today because I like finding out like what the three meanings were of the three different geography. Right. Now, um, what do you see in this picture that is human? Uh, James? Cars. Cars. Lovely. What else do you see? Um, Alice? Houses. Houses. Um, could we see anything that could be physical? Leo? Clouds. Clouds. Oh, this is hard. <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose it could be, because it's going to be about weather, so it's clouds. Robert? In the environmental one, couldn't we put graffiti, because that's sort of bad for the environment? Why do you think we're putting that in this box here? <coughs> Uh, Joseph. <coughs> because when you spray the graffiti, so there's some sort of chemical becomes up. OK. What you're going to do is something very similar to what I've done. And I've given you quite a few photographs. That kind of like a glyph sort of thing. Should we write glyph there? That's Before, yeah, that's, that's not bad. Small clip. That's even better. Yeah, that's too high. There's C for physical. OK, C. A metal bar. Um, metal bar is physical. No, that's human. Uh, metal is human. Do you have to make metal? I know, I'm going to ask you. No. I understood this lesson quite well because um, it was all simple and there, was, there wasn't like really challenging things to do. What environmental themes are, did you pick up when you looked at those pictures? A washing line. Why is that environmental? Because it's saving the environment because oh. if you have um, a tumble dryer yeah. that you're using electricity. OK, that's good, yeah, you're quite right. So there are people saving the environment. OK, well, hopefully Year 5, this is an introduction to what Walton on the Naze is like. So how did Annie get on? Annie, thank you very much indeed for letting me observe that lesson. I, I certainly enjoyed being in the classroom and I think your pupils enjoyed the session too. We had a lovely sort of warm welcome at the beginning of the lessons and you've got a very gentle voice which encourages them um, to sort of listen clearly and calmly to each yeah. other's talking. And looking at the lesson as a whole, it was definitely... You know, a jolly good lesson, right. and there were just probably sort of particular strands that, that perhaps meant it wasn't quite as wonderful as you maybe you'd hoped, or, or maybe you felt it would get to. Um, in terms of some of the little extra bits at the beginning, um, the map you gave them when you asked them about what is this, and one child responded, "It's a map of England." Right, okay. So I just <laughs> thought, in terms yeah. of what do we mean by Great Britain? that perhaps you were sowing a few little seeds that needed to be <laughs> re <-sowed. laughs> a little tiny bit later there. When one boy made a remark about ozone, yeah. you didn't in any way pick up on it at all. Now, I can well see perhaps you thought, if I go off down that yeah. tangent, my gosh, we're going to get into a, an enormous realm of... <laughs> I think, it, yeah, I was concerned about the time where you were going and to. where I'm going to. So I think it's that taking those responses and stretching them okay. to get a bit of depth of understanding Fine. because it's enormous, the yeah. physical human. And I, I felt we'd got the basics of it, yeah. but we hadn't really perhaps had enough time to explore environmental issues. No. With the first observation behind her, the inspector highlighted Annie's need to stretch all of her pupils and to increase the depth of their geographical understanding. Now it's time to bring on the experts. 
to boost Annie's progress, help comes from primary geography expert Wendy North and voice and communications coach Ulrika Schulte-Bauchlo. They start by watching her lesson. Where humans live, good, definitely, it does mean that. Robert? I've noticed all kids involved, mm. slow pace, gentle, stressing key points. Clouds. This is hard. <laughs> um, She's not altogether clear about the geography. Sometimes it kind of goes a little bit rocky for her. Awesome. She has some mannerisms, touching her hair, <laughs> and it's kind of necklace. Ocean plate. Ocean plate. And mine's about helping her support all the children in the, the yeah. class. Fantastic. Yes. So let's see how it works. OK. Okay, Annie, what I want to do with you is share... To help Annie challenge all of her class, they start by looking at an activity with built-in differentiation. The activity is called Odd One Out. Right. And we have to give some reasons why we think one of these places is the Odd One Out. Well, I would think that Cranmore and Muswell Hill would be more together because I can see more land, whereas here we've got a coast and there isn't a coast in either of those two. Okay. And I would agree with you on that. So on the, these, really, it's people that change the land. Okay. Here, the sea does, because it's the interface between the, the human and yeah. the physical, in a way. Now, right. what we've got there is a slight differentiation, so it's nothing wrong. If some of your children give another reason, they're not wrong. Yeah. But it actually gives that chance to extend the other, more able children. Yeah. One of those things that people who are not very experienced often put at the heart are some inquiry questions yeah. that might help you move it on. Inquiry is different from just questioning skills, though, it isn't it? It is, yeah. yes. So if we're doing an inquiry, yeah. then we're going to start with asking questions yes. and actually asking their own questions. Then they, there's going to be a number of ways that you can actually help them to research those questions yeah. and you've got you've had photographs yeah. you might be able to get hold of maps mm. there might be some on the internet yeah. then when you have done that yeah it's always good to actually think about some purpose for doing it yeah. something that helps structure it and something that helps them to contribute their ideas yeah. perhaps about where they're actually wanting to go and look at okay when you actually go and do the field work no, I can see that. Yeah. Some of them might be interested in the fossils on the beach. Some yeah. of them might be interested yeah. in the tower. There's a range of mm. things, and that means that you've got a structure there as well that will support all of your children. Yeah. But you've actually got the possibilities of your more able children going off and researching further. Yeah. So you don't yeah. always have to be the expert. No. Ulrika notices that some of Annie's mannerisms are getting in the way of her verbal communication. How much do you think are your pupils listening to your words? Oh, that's really hard. It's, uh, hard to say, isn't it's it? really hard yes. to say. Hopefully, I would have thought about 80%. 80%? Yeah. Okay. How much do you think they listen to the sound of your voice? Probably about 20%. Okay. And how much do you think they listen to your body language? 40. Okay. So we come mathematically wise, we yeah, come yeah. to 140. <laughs> Don't worry. Doesn't matter. Yes. No. It's fine. Yes. It's completely fine. So it's what this really shows, and this is actually what most people think, that mm. people listen mostly to the words. So there's a sociologist, his name is Meribian, he's an American. Right. He found out that people only listen 7% to oh words. Really? Yep. It is much more that they listen to the voice, which is 38%. Okay. And this is the biggest point, which is 55%. Whoa. So that means if you use your body language in a way which is distracting, yeah. it has a whole effect on the rest. You are the stewardess <laughs> right. on a flight. And ladies and gentlemen, can you now listen please to our safety instructions? <laughs> First of all, I like you to see the exits. You have one to your left and to your right and in the front of the plane to the left and to the right. Second one, traffic ward. See the cars, stop them. <laughs> no words, that's it. Big gestures, that's it. And be in charge. 
Here we go. Very clear gestures. Just notice how much you reach out from your body. And the last one is a conductor. Yeah, really in charge. And the other hand as well. Both hands, that's it. Yeah, and now you want them all to get really excited and involved. Yes. <laughs> Take this now into your classroom. Okay. Um, on your tables, you have three. You have a range of photographs. Big, big, big. You have it's like a big, big, big orchestra. <laughs> big <laughs> aeroplane. <laughs> big traffic. Get right. your hands away from your body. Okay. All right. Once more. Um, as you can see on your tables, yeah. you have a pack of photographs. Um, I'd like you to choose three of them. Big. Make it really big. Three of them. Yeah, that's it. Three of them. Yeah. Um, and I'd like you to choose three of them. Take the three to put into your boxes to work out what human, physical and environmental geography there is. Yeah. Now I want to put my hands in my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Although Wendy came up with some really lovely ideas of the pictures and maps, but to be honest, the real sort of crux of what I think I'm going to be using is that inquiry process. With her final observation just weeks away, Annie's back to the classroom to put all the advice into action and raise her game. Yesterday, we came up with loads of questions, expecting them to be a little bit off-key in terms of, you know, what type of car dealers do you find in Walton and the Nays? But some of them are really good, like, um, I don't know, you know, why is a groin called a groin? You know, how high can the tide get? I mean, hopefully today's lesson will get their enthusiasm, they'll start thinking more about their questions and begin to research their questions. What is a stone marsh and what is the difference we between a salt on the wall or marsh on the backwaters? Doing the research on the internet you had to find a lot of things and it was hard trying to get into the detail of the actual things on Walton and the Nays. Oh. I gave them too much at the beginning, there were too many websites, too much choice. 888,000. Yeah. I could see their frustrations that they had. This took a long time to learn. Do you think you were learning about other things while you were reading around? Main focus was the body language, so I am starting to do that more often, but it's really challenging because you're trying to organise the learning in a different way and you're thinking about your body at the same time, so hopefully in 50 years' time I'll be just, you know, it will all come naturally and Ulrika will be really proud of me. <laughs> Annie reflects on her first observation with Deputy Head Richard Evans. Physical geography. Well, it could be about, like, you know, some people try to um, cycle around the world. Questioning is, I mean, it's the king here, isn't yeah. it? It's the one that actually, you know, from there flows everything. I think it's useful to use a three part question here. You, you've got the first question out there, the first answer is being given. At this point, go to the second part of it and just dip, use the same question but deflect it over to the, the, a neighbour and say, well, is she right with that answer? They might not give a reason. And the third part of the question, and in some ways the most important, is the third person asks the same question effectively to give a reason. Mm. Each question has got greater value. You, yeah. get, you squeeze out all mm. you can from yeah. one question. Makes sense. It, it does. Mm. It's good. Is there anything else that you could put in with your erosion? I mean, like things that people have been trying to stop the erosion. So, so what does the sea wall do? It stops the sea from coming in, falls down, and then the sea like floods in. I thought that the questioning felt much more productive with the smaller groups because it targeted them straight away, it pushed them in the right direction. It was quite interesting to see how much they did actually understand. At the moment we should use salt marshes because that's our actual yeah. group. I now declare it and it's a part with mud, mud flat. Yeah. There are different children in this class who are coming up at different points. And those children who were quite independent in their learning, they made a real effort. For those children who weren't, you could see them wandering around the classroom or distracting other children. That kind of really, well, it made me feel like quite sort of tense. The inquiry process has been really good, but it's been really hard work. But the benefits are that the children are becoming 
independent in their learning and they're taking on board their own ideas and pushing themselves. It's the day of Annie's final observation. This is what they've done so far. They've researched their facts and they've made them into this leaflet for the parents. Quite impressed, actually. <laughs> they look really good. So, I've learnt loads about Walton on the Nays. I've learnt loads about coastal erosion. I've learnt loads about, actually, the children and how they're learning. <laughs> Have I learnt loads about being an outstanding geography teacher? Um, I hope so, yeah. I mean, I suppose Claire will tell us. Claire Gillies is back, and it's crunch time. With all that expert advice and weeks of practice behind her, will Annie have made it from good to outstanding? Hello, these leaflets will hopefully tell you everything you need to know about Super Soul Marsh's brilliant backwaters, wonderful wildlife and the exciting environment. Personally, I think it's absolutely shocking. The salt marshes and backwaters shouldn't be treated as a dump. People dropping litter isn't helping, it's polluting the area. A group did their presentation and we were talking about salt marshes and backwaters and um, all the, the wildlife there and the environment. The, the layout's quite nice and they've done it quite tightly. They haven't really cut anything off. Right. What did we think about that leaflet? Really good things. Ted. The way they've written interesting introduction, exciting environment and cool conclusion. What did they use there? Alliteration. Oh, alliteration. So you thought the alliteration was really good. Can you talk to your partner three things that you learnt from looking at that leaflet? Three things. to protect the environment. I know there was so much wildlife just around the kind of watery area. Oh. And what? seals. I didn't think you were going to see them. I didn't even know there were seals amazing. in England. said that seals like resting on mud, mud banks because they're permanently ice free. I enjoyed watching the presentation and filling in the form thing, but I'm not quite sure if I liked listening to more facts from Miss Ashraf. I'm not sure. What is a salt marsh? Isn't it sort of a lake, sort of near, near the coast, and it's salty? Ben, if you actually tried to walk on the salt marsh, would, would you like you to probably, fall through it? You probably would yeah. sink how far, how far down is it? How deep is it? Some places might be a little bit shallower. Some places will probably be quite deep. OK, so we kind of like worked out what salt marsh is, but what's backwaters? Can you talk to your partner? What do you think that could be? comes in. And then it will go through the back, like the salt marsh, and it's actually the back water, so the water that always comes underneath three. the wave. Um, Ted? Is it like a swamp, kind it of? It is kind of swampy. Sebastian? Um, um, are there currents in there? <gasps> That's a really good question. Talk with your partner. Do you think there'll be currents in I quite like sitting in the U-shape below the chairs because we, we all got to see each other. Uh, I don't get too bored, but my legs got a bit tired. I was just staying in the same place. Um, Tara? Well, sea level rising may, might make a flood. Maybe. That's right. Why are sea levels rising? The pollution from here is making the, the ice caps melt, which makes more water to rise. I know for homework that I asked you to research different ways that you could help to stop those sea levels rising. Can you talk to your partner one thing that you're going to try and do? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, Five, four, three, two... We've got solar panels on our house to heat all the water. So you've house. already tried to get solar panels? Excellent, Year 5. Well done. I'd like you to very sensibly is to put your clipboards on your inquiry team tables, chairs back. Once you've done that, start walking down to the playground. Annie, thank you very much for letting me join an, another geography lesson about Walton. Um, one thing I really felt about that lesson was how much very productive work they've done in between my first visit and coming back. Yeah. It's really remarkable what they've produced mm. uh, in terms of their presentations yeah. and their leaflets. Yeah. I wanted to make that quite clear because I'm going to say that this particular one lesson yeah. it just wasn't an outstanding lesson for really two reasons one point would be 
the sort of timing of what they were doing. We were sitting on the floor for the whole yeah. hour and within that hour we did actually have to talk to our partners many times. Now it's great to talk to partners and lots of good thinking and questions come out but it became quite a dominant mm. part of the lesson. Yeah. On reflection, no, you're quite right, completely right. That was, I felt it was because there so much information was coming out of it, yes. you kind of got dragged with the flow of the question. <laughs> mm. It was really hard to make that decision of when to break, when to break, or when when to, to break yes. and when yes. to stop. And I suppose you've hit the nail on the head in that some of the questions that were coming up were very big. Yeah. And for example, how deep is the salt mm. marsh? If you don't feel 100% confident about the answer, you can say, now that's really interesting. I'm not quite, I need to do some work on that too. So let's put that down and we'll all look up mm. and come back to it. And just on the point of view of what perhaps could have been parked in a sense, was all the stuff discussing uh, why is sea level rising? Because it was again a very large thing mm. to sort of start trying to touch on. But, but they've clearly enjoyed yeah. this whole unit they're clearly enjoying the yeah. approach and i'm certain that the field trip is going to be tremendous yeah. fun and no doubt will raise goodness knows how yeah. many more questions yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you again for letting me share thank that you. lesson thank you it's been a brilliant journey really good i've tried to look at the children look at what they're interested in look at their questioning push them on and yeah and they've really enjoyed it themselves mm.